me, yeah, Mr. Charming. Anyway, doing a response video, I suppose, to this and some of that, you know, haunt with day. So I'll just paraphrase this, demonstrate your right video. And, um, you know, it's, it's, um, he uses a, a, an analogy, a story, uh, the idea of conflicting interests and uh, what gives one person the right to ask another person what's your right to do what you're doing uh, you know what's your authority uh, and he uses the example of native populations being kicked off their land and you know blah 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 here I have a deed I own it go find somewhere else to live fuck you um, and yeah, it's sort of a sympathetic argument but you know, in some sense, um, the logic's kind of obvious, um, you know, in these disputes uh, throughout human history, Rome and all, you know, might does end up making right in the sense that it's a fight. You, if you want to fight for it, you're going to have to maybe die for it. And that's just the rule. So if you're not willing to do that, or your army isn't big enough, or your collective isn't big enough, uh, you're out of luck. You either join them or you fight them, but that's your two choices. There's no in-between where everybody wins. There's no everybody wins. It's just not in the cards. So anyway, the whole discussion he had about this word right um, got me thinking. You know, as I pointed out before, many of the words in our human language are back -ass word. You know, in the sense that we are describing not the thing, <laughs> you know, we've got the wrong thing. We're we're essentially describing the white space instead of the actual dark space, the character. Um, and where the real meaning is, isn't in the word right, but in the word wrong. Once there's a wrong, then you have a right. Get it? The right is correcting for the wrong. Uh, when we write a constitution of rights, for example. We're basically protecting ourselves against wrongs. That's what the rights are there for. If the rights don't exist, then we can be wronged. So the right's a correction for a wrong. And so you have the right to ask somebody or inquire where it's your authority when you have a wrong to defend. So say if I was a native person <laughs> and um, I was asked to say somebody, I, I asked somebody uh, because I felt wronged. My people had used this land and I felt I had a right to use it because, you know, and somebody's pointing a gun at me and I'm going to ask, what's your right? And they're going to say something like, well, I have a deed, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to explain the wrong and explain that, well, my people were here first and uh, this is our land, we think. And then I'm still going to lose the argument, right? Because he's just going to say, well, look, you go ahead, go to City Hall and try to shoot the mayor. But, you know, good luck, fella. I mean, you can shoot me, but I'm just telling you the government's going to show up and kill you for it. So, you know, I'm just saying this is the way it is. Now, you want to get a job and earn some money and buy some land. Well, then you can play the game like I played it. I worked for 20 years. I've made money. I bought the land. Unfortunately, in our system, you know, this asshole probably didn't work hard and buy the land. He was inherited it and, you know, was deeded it as a gift for some favor and such and such. And that's a wrong, but there's nothing you can do about it because the wrong people have the guns. So, so you're fucked. It's, Nazis were wrong and claiming a right all you wanted isn't going to stop them. You had to go shoot them. And shit, it sucks that that's what it comes to. But anyway, I just wanted to clarify that this conversation about rights doesn't mean anything without the understanding that rights exist to protect against wrongs or to reclamate for a wrong. So anytime you violate something, you harm something, I have a right to ask you, why did you do that? Do you have a good reason to do that? Here's the wrong. I'm going to spell it out for you. Here is the wrong. You're torturing animals for a casual preference, <laughs> okay, um, for a stupid food taste, and it's wrong, all right? 
Now, why, why do you think it's right? Why do you think you have a right to torture other sentient organisms for a food taste? And your answer will be some sort of irrational mush that has to do with some kind of religious notion that uh, human beings, okay, as God created them, chased squirrels and chewed on their raw flesh. No, they ate dead things on the savannah, things that smell actually putrid, right? Human beings, the most sickening smell in the world is rotting flesh, and yet we ate that. That's their argument. That's their logic. We ran around eating the smell, most disgustingly smelly thing on earth, maggot-covered. Most people barf at the mere sight of it, and yet we're to believe we ate it. So obviously, that's a shitty response to the question. And this lame shit that he's pulling now is just more of the same, in the sense that what right does somebody have to ask me what I'm doing? Well, anyone has the right who's defending somebody wronged. I'm saying I was wronged by people who didn't get prime permission to play uh, biological games with my welfare. I'm saying there's going to be new individuals in the future who are going to feel likewise wronged and violated. In their interest, I'm going to ask you, what right do you have to play God and create living creatures for your entertainment? The entertainment of some notion in your head that this will make you feel good. <laughs> right? You're able to suppress all magnitudes of torturous pain, and yet you can't somehow find a way to rationalize your way out of a superficial and trivial desire to laugh at a child eating its own poo or something. Yeah. So you're ludicrous. So anyway, but I just want to make that clarification. Rights have nothing to do with rights. Rights have everything to do with wrongs. Let me say that again. Rights have nothing to do with rights. They have everything to do with wrongs. Wrongs come first. Then you have a right to fix it. Okay. So on to the Hoffler Day. Uh, just too stupid. I mean, you just, you just read, like, all you have to do is read titles. So I haven't been watching those videos, but I'll, I'll play some of this one anyway. Subject of goals and experiences, common cars, so what? So I think this is going to have something to do with this idea that, okay, we put together a set of facts. And logic is basically just recognizing that this set of facts can't be spiraled together in any other way than certain conclusions, Right. You put together certain facts of the Hubble telescope and geological evidence and blah, 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 and you come up with, yes, evolution. This is what logic does. The facts make the logic. That's the truth of it. The logic doesn't really do anything. The facts are the numbers. The logic is just the plus sign and the equal. So the numbers decide what the product is. So here you have a set of facts. Uh... We are conscious. You personally experience it. I can't interpret my personal experience any other way than to clearly say I have experiences that are awful that I would never want to do again, and I have experiences that are not awful and I may want to do again. I mean, if I really thought about it, I would understand that the desire that led up to that ex good experience probably isn't worth it. It's like growing the pimple so you can pop it yeah, I probably wouldn't bother with that. If all I'm doing is relieving tensions and irritations that I've built up over years, you know, a backache I've been working on for four years, and all of a sudden somebody hits just the right nerve and, ah, relief. Yeah, I don't think just to get that, ah, relief, I'm going to want to do the backache again. But that takes a certain amount of deeper thinking. <laughs> to start dissecting your desire and to recognize that you earn it through a bit of pain and misery and work and tedium. That's what you're 
satisfaction is made out of is that you do have to walk the desert. You do have to be hungry. So you do have to do a bit of starving before the food really tastes good. So anyway, so we have that. I, I'm saying that's a common experience, that you, like me, have had really bad, 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 bad days and really good, good, good days. And there's a clear distinction between these experiences. And that the experiences are the thing that means something. It has the value. And that I could take the experience and if I gave it to somebody else, if I took one of my good experiences and I gave it to somebody else, I would understand that I gave them something good. So I gave them a, this good feeling, this good sensation. I relieved their backache. I healed their wounds. Um, but this would be a positive thing. Now experience in another brain. And I have no doubt about it. It's positiveness. That it's just as good as when my back was fixed. If I fix their back, just as good. And there's no doubt about that. So that's the logical set of facts. We're sentient beings. We have valuable experiences. Experiences that you'd certainly want to trade. If there was a store where you could trade them in. <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd try to trade up. You'd try to trade your crippling bad experiences for some less bad experience and then go back the next day and try to trade that experience up to a better experience because they have value they're real commodities they're real events that happen and we have as a fact that they happen equally in all these brains in a sense that there's no substantial difference between my relief and your relief my comfort, your comfort. That's the set of facts. Now he says that there's a logic he can do on that set of facts that creates no obligation to pay any attention to them. That if he doesn't feel like doing the right thing, you know, being economical, you know, making fair trades, so to speak, or, or <clears throat> recognizing the certain economy where there's a broken leg. Uh, if I have it, it's only one broken leg. If the rest of the world has to have it, it's three broken legs. You know, three people have to have the broken leg. So there's a, a decision to be made. And I'm not saying anybody's obligated to do it. I'm just saying that logically they're obligated. The logical obligation is to recognize, yes, it's more economical for one person to have a broken leg than three people to have a broken leg. If I made the number 300, maybe it's more obvious. But I'm just saying the logic is clear. The facts add up to one broken leg good, 300 broken legs bad idea, go with the one broken leg. It's so much better than the 300 broken legs because the experiences are the valuable thing here. They're the gold coins. You know, it's just kind of obvious that a debt of 300 gold coins, wasting them, burning them in the sun, <laughs> you know, whatever the example would be, burning $300, it would be stupid if all you have to do is burn $1. And it's just logical. And he's claiming there's something he can do to those facts that make them, no, there's no logical obligation. The logic doesn't indicate that's what should be done. And of course it does. So anyway, so let's play this nonsense. Uh, and it's going to be nonsense. I mean, so what? What's in it for me? This is philosophy. Fuck. Amazing. Uh, turd. Freaking name of video. Oh, please. Obnoxious Highflagate, who is so obnoxious. I think obnoxious is... You're a rude liar, okay? It's not just that you're obnoxious. You're a liar. You can't honestly paraphrase. You can't make an honest argument. I mean, you just cheat her. Definitely one of the man's favorite words, along with liar, because he is such a big fat liar. I mean, he accuses me of using uh, one word where he spoke three specifically to distort some meaning he had he was... yeah you want me to play the clip i'll play the clip okay yeah you clearly didn't quote me 
you clearly took all the words out off of that preface. I qualified the word subjective extensively, and you took away all the qualifications and just pretended I never made them. That's distortion, jackass. It's uh, expressing. And rather than say, I used these three words, and he used this, and see how it fits in the sentence, blah, 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 he said, no, no, he didn't do that. He talked about it for ages, but he says, uh, like, like if I said red hot, he would only say, in men it was hot. Yes, that would be criminal, an absolute... Yeah, it's really important in certain conversations, okay? So you're going to pretend that qualifications don't matter. So you're using a, a, a more trivial example. But I'm just saying it was quite clear that I was not making any statement about logic being subjective or facts being subjective. I was clearly stating that our brain is quite capable of seeing trees in a common way. We all see the tree. We all recognize it to have a certain weight and potential and mass and all of that crap. And none of that, none of that is distorted in any way by our subjective rulers. Our subjective rulers are all identical in many respects. And that was clearly stated in my video, and you clearly implied that's not what I was saying. And that's, how, that's just a gross cheat. Obviously, we don't agree. I don't think facts are subjective. I don't think perceptions, 99% of them, are necessarily subjective in the sense that there's any personalness to them. Our rulers are quite common. They're quite similar. Uh, we all see it pretty much the same way. Criminal um, offense worthy of the death penalty. Well, look, it, it happens in every goddamn video. So what do you want me to say? It's worthy of me recognizing that you're impossible to have a rational conversation with because you won't fucking pay attention to the argument being actually made and you're going to continue to keep every video to distort and pervert what the other person has said. That's what you keep doing. I keep pointing it out and I'm going to keep doing that as long as you keep cheating, you fucking liar. So, I have a, a question, two questions. Yeah. Well, uh, Amazing, he asked two questions in ten minutes. <laughs> Shit. I'll start off with statements, summarizing this position. Yeah, all agreed upon, all conceded. He says, um, the experiences are subjective. He also comments about how we have these subjective motivation they're individual rulers i'm saying they're all calibrated pretty much the same way and the only thing that's different are the irrelevant things like you like sushi i like a baked potato that kind of crap but the substance of these things we are measuring we are measuring with a very similar ruler you know a nail in your eye is suck i know it's suck all right there's no dispute He seems to think that I don't accept the quality of my sensations as, um, as being mirrored in other um, organisms. You don't accept the logical implication of that equality. That's right. It means something. It means that there's efficiency questions to, that to, be ha to be asked and to be answered in terms of how things are distributed. What's a good game for uh, maximizing how much burned flesh there is versus how much happy yum-yum? Sentient -yum. organisms. But that's not the case. He uses the word that that is the leap is about the commonality and i've asked questions about this before about so similarity and commonality are different concepts so again this is this is uh, the, the parsing uh we're go the game you're going to play it's an effective and essential equality 
sensations in my brain, I have no rational reason to believe they are superior, that they have a richer value quality, that they have any substance that is in any way greater than in any other human brain uh, functioning, normal-ish human brain, and that if satisfaction is to be distributed, it should be to maximize the comfort that can be utilized. What is it in sameness or uh, commonness uh, that, that yields a, an ought? Just one plus one equals two. I mean, the ought is built out of the circumstance. So first you have to have a circumstance. And then the ought is just a part of the logic. The circumstance of 300 ver broken legs versus one broken leg. I have a subjective selfish interest in not having a broken leg, but clearly the logic, the logic points to the fact that 300 broken legs is a preposterously unacceptable uh, outcome when it could have been won by mere bending the, the incidents to this one individual. And I clearly would see the logic of it if it was happening to somebody else, if it was happening to some group of people I was not connected to. I would clearly see the logic of saying, well, shit, we can get away with just one broken leg? Yeah, one broken leg. Don't do the 300. Logical. Because of the fact of the matter, that it's common. Um... I, I mean, it's just like, you know, you can think of so many scenarios, war strategies, all kinds of things. Yes, you want to maximize your potential for victory. You want to end the wars as soon as possible, but you don't want to just, you know, slaughter uh, you know, a bunch of children, essentially. Doesn't mean it, it has some worth, yeah? So it doesn't mean it has some, well, I don't even know where he's going with that. So, he, you know, first he says he accepts the existence of the value of the sensations and the experiences, and now he says it doesn't mean it has some worth. So, you're changing the facts in the middle of the game. It's, it's like switching the ball. Instead of switching the goalpost, you're switching the ball. You're not playing a different game. And because, just because this thing, when located in an individual, has these attributes of, of compulsion or to get away from. Well, again, you keep using these ideas of what a human's reaction is, and you're measuring the reaction as if that's the value. The argument that you're not conceding is that the experience itself has value. If I extract the sensation and I place it someplace else, it still has value. The sensation has value. It's not about any kind of mechanical reaction. So again, you just keep not accepting the premise of the argument. If you want to say that you don't understand that your sensations have intrinsic value regardless of how you react to them. Whether you scream or whether you yell or whether you run, none of that matters if you're feeling pain. Of, of pain, of neural aliveness, uh, you know, through the, the, the uh, pain mechanism. Uh, do, doesn't transfer as a quality of commonness. Okay, so I, again, you say you can, you're can, you agreeing, and then you're just completely now disagree. There's nothing common about our experiences. So my relief of a backache would not in any way be fundamentally similar to some other person's relief of a backache. If they had this, the, the, whatever, 14th vertebrae was crushed, the same, the same, the same condition, and it was relieved <laughs> with the same process, this wouldn't be something you could call you could put an equal sign between these experiences. Uh, there's no argument that I know of that's ever been made. Um, for example. Yeah, I, again, no argument that's been made. Like, so why would somebody have to even argue these points? 
These, these are something, like I said, you, you get this before you're 10 years old or you're retarded. I, I own a Ford car. Now, if it was true that Ford, all Ford owners, they didn't just like their cars, they loved their cars in an extra special way. And in fact, for some reason, we, we MRI people and we, with, with BMWs and, and Audis and um, Chryslers or whatever, yeah, and, and everybody, you know, on the Ford, just, you know, it electrified their brain in pleasure when they thought about that brain. Would that commonality constitute something intrinsically true about it, yeah? Uh, in well, again, we're, we're not talking about the things that make you feel. We're talking about the sensations. Again, it doesn't matter whether it's sushi or hamburgers or uh, fried carrots. It doesn't matter what makes you feel. The value is in the feeling. You keep just changing the subject. You keep talking about the things we project or we, we mechanically react to, and you're not talking about the reaction of the sensation. I don't even want to use the word reaction because you'll change, you'll pervert that into some sort of other thing. The point is, is the sensation is the thing that has value. I've said this over and over and over again. There's no point in saying Ford cars make me feel blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about Ford cars. That's irrelevant. The only thing that matters is what you're experiencing. And if the argument was, you're going to make the argument that somehow it was a fact that people who drove Fords felt better, that it cured their bad back, then it would be logical that people with bad backs drive Fords. In terms of purpose, right? In terms of the other people ought to stop buying the NWs and get Ford cars or adjust their mentality. Yes, if it, oh, if it makes the overall condition of human beings better, if it cures cancer, Ford cars cure cancer. Yes, wouldn't you suggest that logically? Well, if Ford cars cure cancer, I guess they win. Come on, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, let's all drive Fords. Let's cure cancer. To, to, you know, that, that somehow a Ford car, maybe, maybe we should get our own lane or something, you know. Um, Again, if it elevates the condition of the human experience, if it takes away people's tension and discomfort, it gives them pleasure, why wouldn't that be logical? In this hypothetical, we've isolated the idea of commonness in, in neuronal response, and we ask ourselves, Right, so what's the difference between a real cure and a fake cure? I mean, I'm just saying, if the placebo works 100% of the time, uh, isn't that like a super cool cure? So you basically just said, Ford cars cure misery. Yes, BMWs don't. I think that's one up for Ford. What constitutes some sort of special meaning in this 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 locally located um, neuronal response? Well, you're saying it's locally located, but again, you just said it's evenly distributed. That it's the, that that the distribution is consistent, and that it isn't found in these other cars experiences. So when the other cars are experienced, this benefit doesn't occur. I think that's pretty understandable value. And I think it's understandable that, yes, let's go with that. That, that gives it import to the wider community. And there is no argument. The import to the wider community is not the philosophical argument. The philosophical argument is, is what do the set of facts lead to logically? The set of facts you just created is Ford cars basically cure human diseases. You know, uh, of the mind or of the, of, of the um, uh, you know, improve human welfare. 
why wouldn't somebody then say, well, do any other cars do that? And if they don't, then you'd have to say, yes, one up for Ford. And we may that if that was true, that just somehow all, you know, Ford cars could induce this, you know, um, relatively ecstatic, uh, brainal uh, worshipping or something. Um, even even to the extent, let's say, let's say, because you had this this pleasure, it, of, it somehow lessened the ability of pain, yeah. So it would be like an intrinsic good, this commonality by by the amendment. Yeah. Well, again, you're you're the set of facts. You just said it's commonly experienced as an improvement to your living condition. And how how what how can how can I logically say, well, no, I don't want that to happen. I, I don't want people's condition to be improved. So I'm going to buy BMW so they have an unimproved condition. How can that be logically defended? And yet you wouldn't be able to um, make an argument for for why. Um, what it is about this this located phenomena in it of individuals, and that it's common. On, on well, again, you keep, you're going to keep calling something we all experience this this locally located phenomenon. No, they're feelings, all right. And you want to keep you you keep running from that concept. They are experienced. They are a thing experienced, and they have value. So. You know, using this rhetoric to pretend this is a, a, a non-phenomenon when we know it is a phenomenon. I personally have experienced it. I know the dramatic difference between the best day of my life and the worst day of my life. I understand the cavern of difference. Again, I've said this over and over and over again. I don't know how you can keep perverting a simple argument. You can say that you don't think there's a set of facts where experiences have value. Go ahead and say that, but don't pretend I haven't made it perfectly clear that in my reality there's no doubt that experiences have explicit real value. Why it should um, matter universally. It matters because it's value. It's the thing of value. Value is the only thing that matters. The only way you equate what matters is you find things and you see if they have the value V on them. Okay, rock on ground, well, probably no value B V. It doesn't cure cancer, doesn't make anything feel good, doesn't do a goddamn thing, so we can't associate it with any kind of value. But feeling brain obviously has a big V on it. The food that feeds my body, that keeps my brain comfortable, big V on it. Uh, antibiotics that uh, prevent disease, big V on it, because it makes things feel better. Anything that, uh, that affects feeling things and improves the condition of their sentient experience has a value V on it in the positive sense and anything that degrades their condition has a negative V. <sighs> problem here is, another problem here is, is that Mendham um, gets confused about what is true I have no confusion here. I'm saying the set of facts is we're sentient organisms. We have fundamentally common experiences. The only thing different is that we have some subjective uh, variation in what exactly makes us feel, but we all have these class and this category of feelings from horrible to not so bad. Is that um, these subjective um goals we set ourselves, they're not an intrinsic goal. So the only goals that matter... Right. Goals are a whole different subject. Again, the gra what, what exactly makes a person feel good or feel bad is not the subject. It just isn't. There's no value in any of that. The value is in experience. And you can try to make your 
idea of something that needs to take place valuable, but I'm just going to be able to say, no, it's a need that doesn't need to exist. You're not going to be able to show how it does anything in the universe, that it fixes the negative condition that would otherwise exist. There will be no wrong that the existence rights. To us are the ones we set for ourselves, and that they are a to us goal setting. There is no... uh, they're a fact. Once something exists, yes, this is a fact. It exists, it has desires, it has needs that will be individual to it, and its comfort will be derived through those individual expressions. But again, your last example of the Ford car, you were the one who said, okay, let's take that individualization out of it and just make it the mechanism of some sort of improvement in condition. So yes, if you're going to say there are certain vagaries in, cer in certain on certain subjects, we are allowed to say individuals are allowed to make their own choices about how they derive their comfort. But clearly we know that I can make the accusation that if you're deriving your comfort by torturing, incarcerating, and slaughtering a pig, that I can point out the wrong and say that this value equation doesn't make any sense. For your stupid morning comfort, you t caused torture. And I can make the argument that that isn't a rational exchange. Universal goal to go to. And Menem seems to think that the fact that there is no universe, that, that your goal doesn't count towards uh, a universal goal, that it doesn't matter. But you know, what, what kind of porn you masturbate to really doesn't matter, okay? The point is, is that you derive comfort, gratification, satisfaction. Now, if you're, if you're going to masturbate to an actual murder, now somebody can make an argument that, wow, that's a really expensive gratification. That, no, maybe you're not allowed to be gratified at something else's expense. So, again, you, you have to understand that if, it's, if, if all this is is about some, some easily ascertained or taken pleasure, then there's not really an issue to be discussed. But every one of these philosophical issues about our interactions with each other have to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no generic statement that says all behavior is evil or all behavior is good. Each behavior has to be analyzed for what the consequences are, and the consequences are going to be based on, is there a wrong? Is a woman raped? Is an animal tortured? Duh. Just in the same way, um, the mattering of pain is located in, in persons. Again, so now, once again, he said it's only your opinion that matters. If you, are, if you have the opinion that your pain is bad, <laughs> then your pain's bad. But if you don't have the opinion that the, the sensation is bad, then somehow, even though you could be retarded and have the words backwards, somehow if you don't say it's bad, it's not bad. It's not bad intrinsically. The negative sensation doesn't have a negativeness built into it. So again, we're right back to this argument again. I mean, I've said it over and over and over again. Part of the set of facts here that I'm gonna that I'm defending, okay, that you haven't refuted in any way, is this fact that the negative quality of the sensation is built into the sensation. The sen a negative sensation can't be anything but a negative sensation. As soon as it's not negative, it's not a negative sensation. As soon as you take the negative value out of it and make it harmless or fun, then it's not a negative sensation. So it is, is the mattering of personal goals is located in persons. If humanity woke up... We, we, and, and Again, your personal sensibilities are pretty much irrelevant to establishing the set of facts, which are we're all sentient, our gratification is a functionally pretty much the same, a broken leg is a broken leg. You keep evading that set of facts to talk about this extraneous bullshit about whether or not somebody likes sushi or whether they like uh, potato chips. United it um, among, um, with, a, with a, a common personal goal like um, uh, 
sending the global warming in reverse or something. Uh, again, who cares? If, if this is like programs on TV. You like to watch soap operas or something. You like to do watch this. You like to watch that. Who cares? The part that's important is, is that you drive pleasure from watching it. Shit. Uh, it would, that commonality feature isn't what wouldn't imbue that goal with moral authority. It would just be um, happenstance of, of all these people. Yeah, there's nothing intrinsically valuable about your sensibilities. There's, not, there's no intrinsic right to take your gratification. You have to make sure you're not committing a wrong before you exercise what you claim to be a right. If your exercise of your right commits a wrong, then you're violated your right. People wanting to do something. Yeah? For if there was an exception and a person who didn't want to do it, it would just be kind of the mob rule who would take him along. Well, yeah, in most cases, that's right. Yeah, the mob says don't drink and drive. The mob says don't molest children. The mob says don't beat children. Yes, that's right. Fuck. So, we, 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 and, and because, I mean, I wish he'd expressed what three words he used, which I, 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 he thinks I butchered his meaning by isolating one. Uh, yeah, look, I said it was something like perception. Okay, I used something like the word perception. Uh, um, there, you're, you're, it's, it's perceived subjectively. Okay, that means we see it subjectively, but the thing that's being represented, the item that has a label, that we're labeling and putting into our mental model. That thing is not subjective. The, the act of perceiving is subjective. I, I made it clear. They're individual rulers, but the rulers are very common. The eyeballs are individual eyeballs. But there's nothing subjective about the photons. There's nothing, nothing subjective in the sense that there's not a huge variation between what people perceive through that pupil. I'm not sure I did. I, I, the device is common sure and reliable. Again, not again. But I think largely um, I uh, played his entire video. Uh, I, I know there was a bit that cut out where he, I thought he was, was rambling and not so relevantly speaking to me. Uh, but there was no sentence that I, that I think I uh, chopped short in that specific instance. Well, you can say that all you want. Again, I, I, I'm just saying, I, I go to the trouble to qualify my use of the word subjective, and then you just do something like, Ah, oh, I gotcha, you said subjective. That's a, effectively what you did, and then you titled the video as if that's what I said. That I said value is subjective, or that I said perception is sub subjective. When obviously I qualified what element of perception I was talking about being subjective. And then I qualified it by saying that element is so fucking reliable and consistent, eyeball is eyeball is eyeball is eyeball, that it would just be ludicrous to sit there and pretend that it matters that these are all individual rulers because they were all made by the same biological engine and were all of a common genetic code. Dumbass. So let him say it, yeah? And if it is the case that I cut three words out that were important, let him put them in context, and let him evidence these stupid accusations he makes. Well, I've played a ton of your videos and responded to them uh, over and over again, so this is just such bullshit that I have to do this with every goddamn video. I have to waste my time explaining to you there, okay, there's where you did it again, jackass. I mean, I had to do it in this video. I mean, you can't honestly paraphrase. Rather than always talking in the, um, the <laughs> metaphoric as-ifs, um, you know. What, what even is that accusation? Another, another accusation from, you know, pulled out of your ass. 
Where, where is it all metaphoric? I'm the one using real torture, nail in the eye, cupcake. They're pretty obvious examples. You just used Ford motor cars. Fuck. Man, you know, he doesn't know what a lie is. It's not what it's a misrepresentation. Uh, I... Look, you made a, an idiotic video where you titled the video Amendum Concedes Subjectivity. Okay? I mean, it's an obvious cheat of the truth. It's obviously a, just a gameplay by you, like you somehow, I got you, you said the word subjective, you admitted that the rulers are individual. I never denied that they weren't individual. I've never said we collectively feel. I've said explicitly right to your motherfucking face, okay, that there is no collective uh, feeling. I can't feel your fucking goddamn pain, but I can understand its existence. I've said that overtly, explicitly, over and over again to you, and yet you have the obnoxious, rude, disgusting, uh, um, lack of ethics to sit there and quote me as if I said something different. That's a lie, fucker, by rational definition. You deliberately implied I said something I clearly have not said. And could be, you know, I would say it's accidental if, if it did indeed incur, because I certainly had no intent to do that. Uh, Look, I can hang you in rational court on the title of the video alone. You know, uh, but it, it's just such a crybaby, and, and it doesn't even watch the rest of the video where I, I make this point about this. There's no uh, logic in the commonality, so there's no logic, as he says, in in the choice of. Um, Again, he's saying the set of facts, in, in intrinsic equality, substantially the similarity. All of that kind of stuff. I know my experiences come in good and bad. I realize that the other human beings are not Legos. They're not Gumby. They're human beings, just like myself, having very similar sensations. Backache, backache, headache, headache. You know, all of that shit. And I know that comfort and satisfaction and a cure of their disease and all of that shit has equal value when it happens to them as it does to me. And my rational brain has no reason to think... It should cheat so this body gets it good and those bodies get it bad. That's not rationally defendable. Its purpose is true, and there can never be. So there is an acceptance. There's no universal um, purpose to life. But it is happenstance that we do set ourselves our own personal... Well, again, so, so, so to say there's no uh, overviewing pr uh, uh, purpose... Uh, we, we're already establishing that value creates purpose, because value creates efficiency. And, and the prime directive is, don't waste suffering. That's the prime directive. Don't waste this value thing. Always trade up when possible. Always trade up to one broken leg, not 300 broken legs. Cause as little burned flesh as possible. Do no harm if possible. Those are the prime directives. That's the fucking purpose once you create value engines in this goddamn world. The engines themselves have no purpose. They do not serve any need. They, they, they're, they're just mess makers, and they can, as I've many times pointed out, and they can only at best clean up the mess they've made. You want to live a perfect life, you just you pu basically puke on the floor and you clean it all up like it never happened. And that's the best you can do. Oh. There's no logic to them. I mean, the best you can do in isolation. Obviously, you can go clean up all the other puke that's all over the goddamn place. It's to say there's no moral right and wrong to them. The, uh... Again, moral right and wrong, it's about ethics and it's about value. I've only said value equation how many fucking times? And again, just... Like I said, how can I take it as anything else but distortion for you to pretend I haven't said the words value equation over and over and over and over again? It has nothing to do with morality or any other real notions of anything. It all comes down to doing the logic on the set of facts 
and figuring out where the val the best value deal is. That's it. Um, but likewise, on, on, on the other hand, so it's the case with um, pleasure and pain. There's no logic to pleasure and pain, and there's no logic to the shared commonality imbuing some universal purpose. No, no logic that I've ever heard in Mendon. Okay, so does that mean anything to you? Can you even understand? What do you mean? There's no logic to it. There's no logic to one broken leg versus 300 broken legs choosing one broken leg instead of 300 broken legs. There's no logic. Everything else remains the same. You have a choice. 300 broken legs, one broken leg. There's no logic to choosing one, even though we've already established that broken leg is bad. A negative experience. Value equation. The logic is built into it. Events accept same deserve same. And that's a, a notion plucked out of the earth. Right. So same is deserve same. So the idea that same things uh, logically should be treated the same and that they're not the same thing if you treat them different, right? That's the extra qualification you didn't add again. You can't have same. If you treat them differently, they're no longer the same because you've now treated them differently. So you've made them different. I mean, duh. Right? The, to beg the question, right, it, by just asserting it. Well, I'm just saying, there's, there's, to assert four equals four is not really, shouldn't be challenging to anybody. For me to say same deserves same. How is that challenging? Four equals four. Same deserves same. I think that logic is consistent. Okay, then. So I made it. Yeah, under 50 minutes, I think. So that's all I got left in the camera. <laughs> 52. Yeah, it's going to be done any second now, so I can just, you know, whatever. Poke my eye. Um, so anyway, just, you know, this is just, it's all this Nietzsche fucker's fault. Fucking cunt. Nazi bastard prick. <sighs> Fuck you, asshole. You couldn't come up with just be a bug. <laughs> We're too stupid to figure out. We can't do generosity. We can't do decency. We can't do fairness. So just give up and be a motherfucking cunt bug. Wow. Too fucking brilliant. Anyway. Till next time.